Thank you. Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to your big Saturday show. That's three, two, one. And this week's theme is Drake's Progress. We're going to be taking a look at that Sir Francis Drake, that wonderful sailor, a ma man who stood there, what, on Plymouth Hoe, bowling away as the Spanish Armada arrived, and he looked at them and uttered those immortal words, Navy of Spain, I ignore you. <laughs> Didn't care. We produced some wonderful sailors. What about Nelson? And his flagship victory, named after his first night he spent with Lady Hamilton. And, uh, <laughs> I feel sorry for him, you know, poor old Nelson, don't you? Stuck on that column there with all those birds flying around him. I mean, he needs all the help he can get, doesn't he? What's he got? A dodgy eye and a gammy arm. <laughs> you feel sorry for that, right? Eh? Here's the hazard on land you've got to look out for. You don't need the crow's nest, you need an eagle eye. That's our resident booby prize, Dusty Bin. He's here. <laughs> And, of course, he's dressed up as an Elizabethan drummer boy to go with our theme of Drake's progress. But remember, the retreat he could be beating could be yours, because you win him, all you get is that brand new dustbin. They, of course, are our contestants, the most important people on our program. Say hello to them right now. Alf and Jill Jackson from Bury St. Edmunds. David and Audrey Smith from Fairham. John Mulholland and Joyce Cleary from Liverpool. Yes, indeed, and our first couple tonight, we have John Mulholland and Joyce Cleary. And you're from the pool, eh, John? Liverpool? Yep. Uh -huh. Good to have you here with us. Anyway, it says here that you're... Hang on. What, yeah, what do you do for... You tell everybody what you do for a living. Well, I'm on the barges. On the barges. For the American <laughs> company, yeah. For the American company. He couldn't be for from anywhere else with that accent, could he? And how about you, Joyce? What do you do for a living? I'm a student. Are you? I'm a mature student. Um, um, what, yeah, what, what, are, what are you training to be? Secretarium. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. And uh, you're engaged, you two. Have you mm -hmm. set the date yet, or is it...? About September. He wasn't too sure about that, George. You sure? Well, it's up to you, isn't it? It's up to you. Do you like budgets? Yeah. How many of those have you got? Well, we had uh, 20 or but. We had uh, 20. <laughs> he makes Tarbucks out. I'm not sure. That's what <laughs> That's me, mate, Tarby. Yeah, you know, Tarby. He's great. <laughs> Make him feel welcome, will you? <laughs> Lovely job, George. Nice one. It's good. Good job. Hey, Al. Al and Jill. Jackson, and you're from Bury St. Edmunds, yes? Very yes. Suffolk, lovely place. What do you do for a living, Alf? I'm budget clerk. Sorry? Budget clerk. Budget clerk for? British Sugar. British Sugar, I yeah. see. Now, is that cane or is that beet? That's beet. Beet, I beet. see. Uh, no chance of it. The sugar stocks are okay at the moment, not like the I coal. think so. I yeah? think so. Because I can't stand another strike. Did that affect you when we had the sugar shortage? <gasps> I had a cup of coffee at the Queen's Hotel. The waiter said to me, one lump or two, he was using granulated. <laughs> I don't want any more of that. Good grip. What about you, Jill? Do you go out to work still? Yeah, I just work part-time. And what do you do? Punch card operator. Is that right? Yeah. Listen, that accent isn't really Bury St. Edmunds, no. is it? I mean, I'm, I come from London. Where are you from? Which part? From London, from Lambeth. Well, that's where I come from. Yeah. Yeah, whereabouts? Um, Black Prince Road. Yeah, no, that's me. 13 art. Talk amongst yourselves. as I found out. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, nice 30 to meet someone Black Prince Road, Lambert, Vesci, 11. That's it. That's how I should really talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, you, know, you get away from it, it's still safe. It's lovely to have the two of you here with us, though. Make them feel at home, folks. <laughs> Good to hear you. Good luck. Thank you. And here, from another lovely part of the world, Fairham in Hampshire, we've got David and Audrey Smith. Uh huh. And how about you, Dave? What do you do for a living? Uh, assistant branch manager for finance company. Finance company? Yes. Is business good? Very good. It Very is. Very good. And what about your hobbies? What do you have for hobbies? Um, all sorts, basically. Motor racing. Really? Um, yeah, you used to do a bit of grass track racing mm -hmm. until the finances stopped that. Did they? Uh, Even you couldn't get a loan for that. How about you, Audrey? Do you, do you, uh, what do you like doing for hobbies? I like seeing historical places. Yes, and where have you been? Anywhere special? Oh, Winchester Cathedral, That's nice. Arundel Castle, mm -hmm. all sorts, yeah. Yeah, been to London, seen everything there? Oh, yeah. 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 The bloody tower, have you been there? <laughs> they call it that because if you've got to queue up three and a half hours to get in, that's how it really gets its name. Make them feel welcome. <laughs> Good to you with us. Have a lot of fun. Right? OK. We're ready to play the quiz. You know we have two rounds of questioning. They play for £10 for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever they win at the end of that round is what they play for for each correct answer in the second round. End of the quiz, the couple with the lowest amount of money leaves us at that point. Here's the lady with the questions, Caroline Munro. Well, 
You don't need to say much with an outfit like that. The, the theme's got to be Drake's Progress. Let's play the quiz, Caroline. Okay, there's Joyce and John there. One of those three envelopes is for you. Thanks, Caroline, for £10 for each correct answer. Now, you know, Joyce, we like you to answer <coughs> first, ladies first, alternately. Two ways we can stop you if you make a mistake or run out of time. I must accept the first answer you give me, whatever it is. Okay, so if you don't know an answer, please just say, don't know, pass. And I'll go on to your partner with the next question. And here we go for the first question for £10 for each correct answer. It's about the names of football clubs in the Football League and the Scottish Premier League. We will give you the first part of the name, and we want you to finish it. Now. One such team in London is Queen's Park Rangers. So that's the one we'll start you with. It's Queen's Park... Rangers. Right. Luton. So... Tottenham. Hotspur. Oxford. United. Nottingham. Forest. Plymouth. Argyle. Stockport. County. Norwich. Pass. Dunfermline. Pass. Partick. Thistle. Partick Thistle, my favourite Scottish team. I just love that name. Dunfermline Athletic, it is. I didn't know that one. You did, uh, John. Norwich City. Can you think of that now? Norwich you've City. not done bad, John. Joyce, you've got eight right. 80 pounds. <laughs> A nice start. Really? Good deal. Okay. Half and Jill. That's it. Jill takes that one. Same thing. Say don't know or pass if you don't know an answer, because that way you can build your score up. Okay, the question here, again, is about names of football clubs in the Football League and the Scottish Premier League. We will give you the first part of the name. We want you to finish it. One such team in the Midlands is West Bromwich Albion. We'll start you with that one. West Bromwich... Albion. Wolverhampton... Wanderers. Aston... Villa. Charlton... Athletic. Cardiff... Pass. Grimsby... Town. Peterborough... Pass. Newport... County. Berwick. Pass. Wraith. Rovers. Wraith Rovers. Yeah, all the guys, they know the answers to these. It's Berwick Rangers. That's a tough one for you there. What else have we got? Peterborough United and it's Cardiff City. I think that's about all. Is it seven right? 70 pounds. Another good start. Good for you. Lovely. Okay. Thank you, Caroline. So the last envelope means that's David and Audrey's here. And the question again is about the names of football clubs in the Football League and the Scottish Premier League. We will give you the first part of the name. We want you to finish it. One such team in Yorkshire is Sheffield Wednesday. So we'll start you with that one. Sheffield. Wednesday. Leeds. United. Bolton. Pass. Crystal. Palace. Crewe. Pass. Bradford. Pass. Derby. County. Ipswich. Town. Hamilton. Pass. Heart of... Ah, oh, yeah, that's a toughie, but uh, I'm sure you'll know it now. Heart of Midlothian is what it is. Hamilton Academicals is another great Scottish name. Crew Alexandra, and the other one was Bolton Wanderers, but that's not bad. Six, no, it is. It's five. I've got, what have I got? Two, four, five. What did I miss? Bradford City, a local one. I should miss that, shouldn't I? Five gives you 50 pounds. It's still pretty good. Lovely. Yeah. It's pretty tight at the moment. We've got couple number three here. It's David and Audrey are on 50 pounds. We've got couple number two, Jill and Alpha, on 70. And the lead at the moment, Joyce and John, Liverpool up there, 80 pounds. Couple number one. Yeah. OK, so it's round two questions. Three envelopes. One's for you, Joyce. Which one? That's the one. Good. So for 80 pounds for each correct answer, again, we'll let you have one to start with. Same rules apply. This question here is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters P-O. We give you the definition, you give us the words. Words beginning with P-O. Now, a large rodent covered with quills is a porcupine. We'll start you with that one. A large rodent covered with quills is a... Porcupine. Right. Substance that maims or kills. Poison. All the people of a country. Population. Window in a ship. Pass. Breakfast dish made from oats. Porridge. South American cloak. Pass. A pouch on a garment. Pocket. Type of small horse. Pony. Tiny opening in the skin. Paw. Describes the white bear of the north. Polar. Polar is right. Right on the buzzer there, John. South American, South American cloak was a poncho. The window in a ship. I thought you'd have got that one. Yeah, yeah. Really? But I didn't he know. couldn't, but he did. Oh, I didn't want to take a thing. chance, yeah. He did want to take the chance. <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean, actually? Yeah, that's lovely, that. They're the only two I've got. That's right. So how have you done? You've got 640 pounds. That's a good one. Very well. <laughs> OK, Alfred Jill. 
Thanks a lot. You're going for £70 for each correct answer. And again, your question here is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters T-A. We give you the definition, you give us the word. Words beginning with T-A. The larva of a frog is a tadpole. We'll start you with that one. The larva of a frog is a... Tadpole. A fit of bad temper. Tantrum. A check pattern from Scotland. Tartan. Equipment for fishing. Tackle. Small popular newspaper. Pass. List of multiplication totals. Tables. A hooked claw. Pass. A hired car. Taxi. A thin candle. Pass. Slang for an old sixpence. Tanner. I don't think any of us will forget that one, <laughs> will we? I should have had that. No, yeah, you should have <laughs> had that. Especially from where we come from, Jill, yeah. yeah. A thin candle is a taper, a hooked claw, a talon, and the other one was a small popular newspaper, a tabloid which I'm afraid most of them are today. However, at the end of that, you've got £490. <laughs> Very good. Good for you. OK. Thank you, Caroline. Last round questions for Audrey and David from Ferrum in Hampshire, and you're going for £50 for each correct answer this time. This question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters T-O. We give you a definition. We want you to give us the words. Words beginning with T-O. Now, a North American Indian fighting axe is a tomahawk, so that's the one we'll start you with. A North American Indian fighting axe is a... Tomahawk. Money levied for the use of a bridge. Pole. A young child who has learned to walk. Toddler. A sledge. Pass. Bread that has been browned by heat. Toast. A monk's haircut. Pass. Child's plaything. Toy. A male cat. Tom. A bullfighter. Tomador. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, she knew she'd said it. I have the... She Toriador. said Tomador. Toriador. And it's a shame. I do, as Debbie, our adjudicators here, I have to accept that one. It's the question of whether you say it or not. It was a Toriador. She said Tomador. I have to accept that. Sorry. A monk's haircut is a difficult one. A tonsure. Tonsure. Uh, a sledge was a toboggan. And they're the only two. What have you got? 300 pounds you've got. That's still very good. That's good. And the two letters given... To each of our couples this week, spelt out P-O-T-A-T-O, -T -T -O, potato, tying in with this week's theme of Drake's progress. But at the end of this week's quiz, we've got couple number three, that's David and Audrey on £300. Couple number two, Jill and Alf, £490. The winners of the quiz from Liverpool, Joyce and June up there, couple number one, £640. <laughs> And, of course, we have to say goodbye to this particular part in the program, to David and Audrey. It's always a shame, but it's not a bad night's work, is it, Audrey? 300 quid. There it is. There's the money from Caroline. Again, you had that choice of either saying don't know a pass, and you were halfway through it, and we do have to accept it. There's your ceramic dusty bin. Love to everybody up there. Nice to see you. Give them a round of applause, folks. Thanks for coming on the program. Lovely to have you with us. Time for us to go away just for a couple of minutes. We'll be back on 3, 2, 1 very, very soon. Welcome to part two. This week's 3 to one is called Drake's Progress, and we've got John and Joyce, who are from Liverpool, and they're against Alf and Jill, who are now from Bury St Edmunds. They're going to be with us right through part two. You know what happens here. At the end of each one of the items we show you, one of the characters will come here to the table, leave a clue object, and read a rhyme. And they're very short these days, just two-liners, but just as difficult. When we've got three on the table, I'm going to ask each of you to select one you'd like to reject if you're going to be the lucky couple to get through to part three, where all the big prizes and Dusty Bin is waiting for you. Good luck to you. We will go on have our first item of Drake's progress. And for this, we go to the court of Queen Elizabeth I, where Sir Walter Raleigh has just returned from the Americas. Majesty, the Spanish ambassador. God save all here. <laughs> On behalf of His Excellent Majesty, King Philip of Spain, a darling man, I'd like to protest. Uh, you did say Spanish, ambassador. Indeed, ma'am. He told us he was. <laughs> My mother once went on a day trip to Cork. 
I see. And what brings you here? I wish to protest at yet another abominable act of hostility against my beloved country. Our flagship, the Pizarro, has been seized together with 60,000 pounds. Yet again, the work of a band of buccaneers led by a fearful, savage English sea captain. Who is this savage sea captain? Hello, my darling. <laughs> Britannia, Britannia, Rosa, It's the right shoulder. <laughs> Get up, you damn fool! I think you've got the words wrong. <laughs> it's arise. Arise. Arise, you damn fool! <laughs> she gave one to Harry Seacombe. <laughs> What's Harry got that I haven't got then? Talent. Oh. <laughs> Who are you? Francis C. Drake, ma'am. What's the C for? Put the ships on. <laughs> <laughs> Tanisha, where is our Pizarro? Drake, have you taken the Pizarro? <laughs> Pardon? Did you take the Pizarro? <laughs> I refuse to answer that question on the grounds it may lower the tone or the show. <laughs> Drake, I shall have you castigated. Oh! <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. Where is Sir Walter Raleigh? He's circumnavigating Cyril Smith at the moment. <laughs> but I'm supposed to be seeing some of the things he has just brought back from America. And so you shall. Let's have lot number one, please. Tell you later, dear. <laughs> Drake, what do you call this? Mahogany. Mahogany? Is she Scottish? <laughs> Not her, the table. That's a new kind of wood made in America by the Indurans. With English oak, we have no need of mahogany. I meant the strumpet beside the table. Was she made in America? Frequently. <laughs> she was known as a strumpet voluntary then. <laughs> so you don't want the table then? Get rid of it immediately. Right, what am I bid? How much you say your cargo was worth? Um, 60,000 pounds. So? To the gentleman with the Spanish tummy. <laughs> Hold on. It's only a matter of time, you know. There he is. Don't let him kid you. He's still playing muddles in Snow White at the Phoenix. Yeah, we're still down there, still there doing are, it. You see. You've no. got a cup it. Come in there here and go. put it in. Okay, now what listen. Are you leave these folks I'm there, leaving Mike? this. It's Philip's beard. Oh. There she goes there. Philip's beard. I reckon Scargill could wear that, couldn't there he? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> what does the rhyme say? The rhyme is this. Daydreams, no, it's down to earth. It's up to you, but what's it worth? See, John, how oh, very easy, aren't they? Wonderful. That no is. problem at all. And, and that's just the first one, John. There we go. <laughs> nice to see you, friends. Take care. Cheers, Mike. Take care, friends. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Furniture, you think? Yes, yeah, it could be furniture. Yeah. Could be furniture. There's a bit of chatting going on here. What do you think, John? Must be a bed. Must be a bed. So furniture here. Yeah. What do you reckon? You have a clue. <laughs> he has the clue. Well, at least that's good that she's thinking. Right, we've got one on the table. When we've got three, of course, we have to sort of make up our mind what we're going to do about it before that elimination question. Let's now have item number two, and we're going back where Francis is about to show the Queen another of Rala's discoveries. <laughs> Right shoulder, dear. <laughs> Get up, you damn fool! 
think where I'm going wrong, it worked for Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Show me more of Raleigh's discoveries. Very well, oh merry monarch. <laughs> what about that, Queen? Ooh. Whatever it was, it appears to have died on the voyage. <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be like that. That's the way they use it. That's called tobacco. Hmm? Tobacco. <laughs> it comes in several versions. This is the powdered version called snuff. Hmm? Snuff. Snuff? Hmm. What do you do with it? Stick it up your nose. <laughs> Have you taken leave of your senses? You can't be serious. Stuff it up your own nose, at once. So be it. But you'll all be missing a unique sensation, observe. Open two, three, pinch two, three, up you do, two. Doggy gone walkies. <laughs> version, two. version two, La Seguero, or Snart. And what pray do you call that strange implement? Artistic license. <laughs> You will now all experience me experiencing a unique sensation. There's something damnably attractive about you. <laughs> just can't put my finger on it. You just try. <laughs> Who's lovely then? Who oh, defends me, Essex? With her life, ma'am. Withdraw, sir, or I'll run you through. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Lizzie. <laughs> Are you game for the sport? Do your worst, sir. <laughs> I can't. Why not? My cigar's going out. <laughs> How do you do? Yeah, how do you do? He's a taller as well, isn't he? You're, you're a very talented guy. You're always doing after the speeches. You're starring in pantomime and shows all over the country and the world. You write a lot. And you've just written a book, I believe. Yes, a new it's a, a book of poems called Who's Zoo. Yeah. Nice to have you with us, Carl. You want to get to leave these folks as a I have uh, some Virginia tobacco. Oh, tobacco. Yeah, like okay. that. And how about the rhyme? And the rhyme is, Carl's name will always pretend, but this will get there in the end. That's the number two. That's on the table. We're going to thank Carl Robinson. Thank you, Carl. Bye. Bye. Virginia yeah. tobacco, he says. John having a chat there. What do you think, John? That's the cadder. That, that's the cadder. <laughs> you really? We'll get there in the end, yeah. Oh, that's what he thinks. How about that? <laughs> Could be about Alfred Jill. Could be the bin because of the ash ah. from tobacco. Oh, dear. He's put a thought in your mind there. Well, what can you say? Two on the table. Two on the table. Then we've got to make up our, our minds what happens when the next one arrives here. OK? Let's get on then, have item number three. And this time we're going to back to see what else Sir Walter has discovered. But will the Queen approve? Right shoulder. 
<laughs> Arise, you caterwauling jabberwock! <laughs> caterwauling jabberwock? <laughs> she thinks I'm Barry Manilow. <laughs> All right, next. Very well. Lot number three contained a letter from Sir Francis to me. Said, Dear Frank, lot three contains new fibre called cotton. Hmm? Cotton. <laughs> also brought back cotton. Clothing with me, some of which can be seen on American model who also came back with me together with her agent. <laughs> Cheers, Wally. Yoo-hoo! Hi, honey! P.S. That'll be her now. <laughs> <laughs> this in my life. Nor have I. <laughs> Where does she come from? Cleavage, I think. <laughs> That's Cleveland, honey. Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, sweetheart. I'm Martha Goldstein. I'm from the States, and I run a big model agency over there. I can see that from over here. <laughs> oh, my God, aren't they a knockout? Indeed. <laughs> You can say that again, baby. Drake, I've seen enough. So have I for a little while. I, uh, I want you to know that is 100% cotton. Never. I prefer our traditional English cloth. Oh, but honey, you're way behind the times. I mean, how can you bear to wear all this stuff? It's so dreary and so heavy and so old-fashioned. It suits me. My dear, a shroud would suit you. <laughs> I mean, look at you. Miss, you know, I mean, how do, you, how do you manage to stand up straight and all that stuff beats me? It must take you hours to get all that stuff on. And my dear, take a look at what it does to your chest. I mean, talk about the plains of Nebraska. <laughs> Drake! <laughs> Unless... Unless you need a little help in that direction. And that's where the dear old little cotton mill comes up trumps again. There you are. Cotton wool buzzies. Oh, no! Ah, oh, go on, honey. Try them on. It'll make a new woman of you. I don't want them, thank you. She doesn't want them, thank you. Now, you don't need them, love. You. <laughs> now, I'll tell you where cotton scores a personal best with me. Underwear. Take a look at these. Oh. His and hers. <laughs> you can both get into them at the same time. Oh, I don't want them. She do want them. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll tell you what they are, Levin. Come on, love. <laughs> <laughs> One heck of a talented lady, this one. I, I've got to congratulate you, Libby, on your Channel 4 One Woman Show. I know you do Thank that you. One Woman Show all over the world. Yes. But it's the first time I've seen you do that on television, and it's great to see. Oh, what are you going to leave thanks. them, Libs, is, is the clue, these people. Well, here's the clue. The empty drawers. Oh, the empty drawers. Okay. The empty drawers. <laughs> and what about uh, the rhyme? I have a little rhyme for them as well. And it goes like this. Hang on. <laughs> <clears throat> empty may be the one you draw, but would you fill it all the more? Mm. There you are. That is the third one. Now we've already got to start thinking. But thanks. Libby Morris. Thank, Thank you, Libby. You, Jen, Good luck. Morris. Yeah. Yeah. You've just heard that from Libby. I can read the other two again, of course. Now, this was brought in Philip Spear <coughs> by Mike Newman, number one item. Mike said, Daydreams, no, it's down to earth. It's up to you. But what's it worth? That was from Mike. And, of course, the Virginia tobacco brought in by Cardew. Cardew said, Cardew's name will always pretend, but this will get there in the end. So, now you've heard them again. Yes. Uh, oh, Joyce is sighing. Yeah. And you've got to make up your mind which one you're going to get rid of if you get through the elimination question. Yes. What, do you say? what do you say? Tobacco leaf. Yes? yes. You go along with that, Jill? Yeah. Well, okay. They the want beard. it. Yeah. yeah. The beard. He wants to get rid of the beard. Beard. Good. Fair enough. Well, good luck to you. Here's the elimination question. Now, put your hands beside that button, will you? Now, directly you think you know the answer to this, just hit the button and answer. Now, you know, if you answer and you're wrong, I have to offer it to the other couple. Of course, if they answer and they're right, that means they're through. But if they're not right, I'll just continue reading it until somebody does get it right. Good luck to you. Now, this is a famous English adventurer. 
He was a great favorite of Queen Elizabeth. He tried to establish a colony named Virginia in 1587. Accused of treason, he was executed in 1618. He regularly rallied round the flag. Ah! Alf hit it. Sir Walter Raleigh. It was Sir Walter Raleigh. He didn't know it for the last one. What is that? Goodness, that, that is electronically tested there because you hit it at the same time. That was the light that came up, and you didn't want to take the chance. I got to the last part of the question. I couldn't have painted any closer than that. What a shame you lost. Not to worry, though, you did pretty well. This Caroline, with the money you won in the quiz, how much, Caroline? 640 pounds. 640 pounds. Well, well done, There's that ceramic dusty bin, of course, John. Yeah, you wanted one of those? Good. They're little devils to get a hold of, one of those, I can tell you that. And Joyce and John, if you just take a look across at Karen David over there, she's got a consolation prize for you. It's a beautiful glass ship in a bottle. <laughs> Thanks very much, Joyce, for being such a mm, lovely competitor. You too, John, and good luck to all the budgies. <laughs> and the pool and Everton for the cup or the league championship, isn't it? Oh, John and Jim. Oh, good luck to him. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming along. Bye bye, John. Bye, George. Well, well, Alf and Jill, that was, that was a tough one. You didn't know whether to take a chance or not. You waited on till the end there. You hit it. Really is it really <laughs> happening, says Jill? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Or I'm happy to say for you it is. At least we know what's happening now. We're going into the commercial break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You've rejected the beer, yeah? Oh, oh, the leaf. I'm yeah. sorry, I forgot. Okay, you've rejected the tobacco leaf. We'll be back in a couple of minutes to see exactly what that is. See you in a minute. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, part three of this week's 321 Great Progress. And we've got Alf and Jill, who are from Bury St. Edmunds, got through to the part of the show, hopefully to take home a good prize. And you've rejected the... Adam's leaf. <laughs> well, it's not Adam's. It's uh, Virginia tobacco is what it is, Alf. And we know what you hope it is. Have you had second thoughts about it? No, it, well, doesn't, it doesn't worry us. No? Well, this is what it, it said. Really. Cardew brought this in and said, Cardew's name will always pretend that this will get there in the end. OK, so hold nice and tight and see just what this is. Cardew's name will always pretend. Cardew's name does, of course, contain the letters C-A-R. Cardew is also known as the CAD, and there's one CAD on our show who also pretends to be something else. Cardew brought them in, in the, the tobacco there and said, this will get there in the end. Well, tobacco ultimately becomes ash and finishes up in the bin. Dusty bin, you done it! <laughs> Okay, let's get on then, have item number four. Now we're going back to Drake's progress and see what Francis has got to show the Queen this time because it happens to be his latest game. Recitare mentre presso in a heel. Bah! Ah! Cease! Cease! No, cease! Are you in pain, sir? I am indeed, madam. It's my right shoulder. <laughs> Why don't you give me a little massage of my dagger? Oh, get up, you fool! <laughs> I think you've dropped something. Bowls. <laughs> I tell you, you have. No, no, no. They're bowls, ma'am, you see. I'm, I'm famous for them. <laughs> Why, may I ask, do you have two wooden bowls? <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Shall be nameless. You see, I've invented a new game called Jack High. First, you need a Jack. Essex, you be Jack. Come to the balustrade with me what, 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 and what, what, adopt what, what, a reclining attitude. What do I do? Yes, just stand still and I'll make you famous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now... The first one to get their bowls nearest to Jack is the winner. But I don't have any bowls, do I? No answer to that. <laughs> you shall have one of mine. There you are. Ooh. Nearest to Jack, the winner. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 You've, not, you've uh, not quite got the hang of it, madam. 
you see. You, you don't chuck it, you bowl it, you silly old... <laughs> Lester, you be Jack. You must be joking, dear. Like to be Jill. <laughs> You've talked me into it. I'm <laughs> Adopt an attitude pleasing to all. Splendid, yes. Where'd you say he came from? Leicestershire. Sure, it's not Berkshire. <laughs> right. Balls away! <laughs> oh! Great! You are demolishing my palace! Uh, I've just invented a new game. Ten balustrade bowling! <laughs> Your Majesty! It's Walter Riley. Hello, Wally. Oh. oh, friend. Hello. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. <laughs> By Jove, look what I've discovered. Not now, Walter. The Queen's out. She's out. Well out, well. Out? Out? What do you mean, out? You cannot be serious, man. The Queen is in. She's in. How could she possibly be out? I pedaled 15 miles to show you this. You tell me she's out. She's in the crest. You need glasses. Jeez, this is the pit. <laughs> Polly, the... Polly. Yes. Walter. Sorry. Settle down. Now, you've given me a great idea for a new game. I have. You come round my house tonight and we'll talk about it. Right. Where do you live now? Wimbledon. Wimbledon? <laughs> First service. <laughs> Uh, good to meet you. Yes. But of course, this is a bit of a nostalgic trip for you, won't we, Charlie, isn't it? Yes, because uh, my very first television was with Charlie Drake. Really? He wanted a straight actress to keep rabbiting while he was being funny. He picked me. <laughs> and it really see, it started yeah. my well, career. He's got one on tonight, isn't he? Yes, 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 Lovely. Yes. So now, so what are you going to leave them as the clue? Well, now, one racket. Oh, a racket, okay. Tennis racket. And how about the racket? A regular round of events or two. Win this, you lose, but wait. That's true. Find your way out of that one, huh, Jill? What can you say? <laughs> we'll try and do that and thank mm. Josephine Susan. Joe, thank mm. you. Thank you very much. Josephine Susan. Now, Jill, heard that? Any idea what it could be, Jill? Um, maybe that could be sports. Uh -huh. Well, I can read one of these two again. Which one would you like to hear? The beer brought in by Mike or the empty drawers brought in by Libby? Libby Let the empty Morris. drawers. Okay. <laughs> Libby Morris brought the empty drawers in and she said, empty may be the one you draw, but would you fill it all the more? So, there's three on the table. One has to be rejected. Which one's going to go? I reckon the drawers. Yeah? yeah? What do you say, Jill? I'll go along with Alf. Yeah? Yeah. All right. She's going to yeah. go along with Alf and we're going to reject the empty drawers brought in by Libby Morris, who said, empty may be the one you draw, but would you fill it all the more? Is what Libby said. Now then. Now then. They brought you in the empty drawers. Empty might have made you think of Dusty Bin, but not when he's gone. Empty may be the one you draw. Well, if you're drawing it, perhaps that means it's your own design. But would you fill it? The wood here was W O D, and you could have filled those empty drawers in a piece of furniture of your own choice, specially commissioned by a leading local craftsman, Philip Doddridge. <laughs> in burr walnut cross banded in black walnut and as you see the timbre top rises automatically as the top drawer is opened and there's a long case clock standing over six feet in mahogany with feather grain panel and door a really beautiful work that is who wouldn't say no to one of those i must say either of those beautiful pieces now we're going to have item number five back once again with francis this time he's about to introduce the queen to the potato <laughs> Such a night! Oh, what a night! <laughs> Shut up and get up! Where's Raleigh? He's gone to try and discover a cure for Bonnie Langford. <laughs> however, however, he left you his latest discovery from America. What are those? King Edwards. <laughs> King Edward's what? <laughs> Spuds. Spuds? Taters. Taters? What you do with them? Eat them. Eat those? Yes, you can boil them, bake them, mash them and fry them. 
There's a lot of money to be made out of these. I've already written a first commercial jingle. All the court note. We've just got to get the people singing it. And then we flood the market with these. Drake's oven ready chips. Right. <laughs> and then we follow up with these. Drake's tricking drumsticks. I never knew chicken had drums. <laughs> and these. Drake's fish fingers. I never knew fish had fingers. And these, Drake's Christy cod balls, you <laughs> I never knew cod came from America. Well, <laughs> it's a piece of cod that passeth all understanding. Now, do you want to hear the song? No. Then so you shall. Song sheet, please. <coughs> Here it comes. I like taters, eggs and sigh of dawn. these chips of yours. And so you shall, ma'am. Chips for Her Majesty, no vinegar. Kneel, <laughs> <laughs> <Neil>, sir. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it's a right shoulder. <laughs> She got it wrong again. <laughs> get up, you fool, and go to the table. Of course, of course. It's a rise, you know, not get up. You fool. Jo Tewson said she started in TV comedy with you. I think she's ended it again. Finished tonight, you're right. Well, Belton, that was. Good to see you again, Charlie. Nice to see you. Last time we saw you was probably about a year ago. I know you were going off to do uh, one of those drama stints of yours. You were going to Manchester, weren't you? That's right. And what did you do then? Did uh, The Caretaker. Pinter's Caretaker. Pinter's Caretaker. Now, that, that's heavy stuff and great stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, what I'm thrilled to bits about, because I have it right here, for his performance in that, Charlie has won the uh, Theatre Award here for his the best performance in a play. Isn't that wonderful? I've got the pleasure of presenting that to you, Charlie. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to go. Thank you very much indeed, Eugene. That's the thing about our show, you never know what's on the show, but you do know the bin's on. Once he's gone out the way, you don't know what is coming up. I'm sure you didn't realise that was coming up there. Yeah. Fabulous prize. Would you have anywhere to put that boat? <laughs> I can't no. as big as that. No, I can't as big as that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A parking um, problem there, but we've got two left. As we have the last two on the table, I can read them both again. Remember, this the number one item brought in by Mike Newman, who said, Daydreams, no, it's down to earth. It's up to you, but what's it worth? That was Mike. And the racket, brought in by Josephine Tewson, a regular round of events or two. Win this, you lose, but wait, that's true. Sure. How about the audience? What do you think? But why? Perhaps it means but why, because it's a holiday. Ah. Perhaps it says, perhaps it says, it's uh, terrible. It's, it's just, a, just a game of chance, isn't it? What, you reckon you want to get rid of that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. What do you say, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. I'll you do not go along with Alf, don't you? Yeah. We don't check with Mrs. Boycott. What do you say about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, we have the last two. One's got to be rejected. Which one's going to be? Yeah. yeah? We're going to, yeah tennis. You're going to get rid of the yeah. tennis racket? Yeah. yeah. OK, that's being rejected. Brought in by Josephine Tewson. A regular round of events or two win this, you lose. But wait, that's true. Oh, wait. It's terrible oh, waiting here, isn't it? Is. A regular round of events or two, a regular round might have meant made you think of Dusty earlier on, but perhaps not when we said or two. The racket may mean some sort of sports equipment, which you latched onto. Yeah. Win this, you lose, but wait, it's true. Win this, you lose. Well, nobody actually loses, but we did say, but wait. Now, if the wait is spelled W-E-I-G-H-T, you might be led, yes, towards some sort of gymnasium equipment if we add that to the fact that a regular round of events is known as a cycle, or in this case, two. Did you need them? Then you'll see exactly what this is. Take a look at this. Now there are not just two sports bicycles, there's tennis equipment, a rowing machine, an exercise cycle, and there's two track suits as well. And Jill, ladies and gentlemen, has just told me that you teach Keep Fit, yes? Oh, couldn't you have done with that? There you are. No. Fabulous prize, as always, on 3 to one It's been rejected. Thank you very much, folks. Take it away. It has to go. There you are. There you are. You see? Now, now, you can never, ever tell. You know, that sort of prize doesn't appeal to everybody, but with you, it would have really worked, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah. You'd have loved that. You do yeah. the aerobics and all that as well? Yeah, I do, yeah? yeah. Have you been reading Victoria Principles aerobics? That's good. The one from Stout Dallas. No, I haven't. She I says, like... lay on the floor with a millionaire beside you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should read it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your prize, anyway. You're, you're going to go home with a prize here. It's the uh, Phillips beer brought in by Mike Newman. Daydreams, no, it's down to earth. It's up to you, but what's it worth? Any idea what you think of this? Holiday. Holiday. You do? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, let's have a look. See what it is. Let's have Daydreams, no, it's down to earth. Daydreams are also called castles in the air or castles in Spain, and down to earth rules out castles in the air. Mike brought you in Philip's beard, and of course, Sir Francis Drake singed that on a visit to the Spanish coast. So there's quite a Spanish connection here. It's up to you, but what's it worth? It's up to you was meant to indicate a flight, a 3 2 1 holiday to Spain. Oh. Take a look at this. <laughs> You're going on a scheduled flight from Heathrow to Madrid. This is the very castle where you're going to stay for eight days. It's situated in an area which is some of the most picturesque castles in Europe. And throughout your stay there, you're going to have the use of a private car to visit the most beautiful countryside and surround around the castle. After that, it's another scheduled flight. This time, Malaga for five days on the beautiful Costa del Sol. A fabulous prize, Alf and Jill. Let's go and get your tickets. Come on. There's your ticket. Don't forget money in the quiz. Karen David has that. Karen, how much did they win? Four hundred and ninety pounds. Four hundred and ninety pounds. There it is. Congratulations, Al. Jill. Never been abroad, they said. Well, they're going to have a fabulous time there in Spain. They've been terrific couples, as indeed all our couples are on the show. You've been a marvelous audience. Thank you for tuning in. Until we see you again next week. Good night, everybody. Take care. Have a wonderful week. Good night now. Bye bye.